Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to calculate this without a calculator. We have the square root of 49 squared plus 49 plus 50. And of course one way would be to just calculate everything that you have in your square root. So just calculate all this green stuff in here and then at the end just take the square root of your one big number then. But it's a lot of calculations so that's not my preferred method. You can try it if you want to of course but I want to find a more efficient way. And we have 49 in here and 49 in here as well. And in between we have a plus. So we could factor out a 49 out of this sum here. So let's try it and see if it helps us somehow. We have our big square root. We have the plus 50 here at the end. We will take care of this later. And now I want to factor out a 49. I'm going to make it green. And what is left in my parentheses then? I had a plus here in between, so I'm going to have a plus here as well. And from the first part, the 49 squared, if I factor out a 49, what is left here then? Well, the 49 squared means we have 49 times 49. And out of this, I'm going to factor out a 49. So if I factor out this, this is not going to be there anymore. Only my 49 is what is left in here then. Okay, what about the second part here? Which means I want to factor out a 49 out of the 49. So I only have a 49 here. So I have 1 times 49. And if I factor out this green 49, then the 49 is not there anymore. Only my 1 is left. So don't forget to put the 1 here. Okay, but then this calculation now is way easier. We still have the square root. We have the 49 here. We multiply it by 49 plus 1, which is just equal to 50. And then we add the 50 here at the end. Okay, same thing actually. We have a 50 here, we have a 50 here, we have a plus in between. We can factor out the 50 again. So let's do this. What do we have then if we factor out our green 50? What is left in our parentheses? We have the plus here in between. If we factor the 50 out, only the 49 is left here. And here again, we have 50 times 1. So if we factor out the green 50, only the 1 is left. So as a result here, we have 50 times 49 plus 1 equals 50. Before we keep going with our calculations here, I just want to show you that this step here could have been a little faster because if you take a look at this and say that you have 49 of your green 50s and you just want to add one more of the green 50s, then in total you have 50 of your green 50s and that is exactly what we have here, 50 of the green 50s. So this step here is not necessary, but well, never mind now that we're here. Uh, we can write the 50 times 50 as 50 squared, so that we have this here. And then we can cancel the square root and the square, and only the 50 is what is left. But... It's really important that this canceling out is only possible because this is a positive number. This could go wrong. So in general, if you have the square root of a number squared, so x squared, you cannot 
just cancel the square root and the square and say the result is going to be my x. This is not correct. What would be correct is to say the result is the absolute value of this number, so the absolute value of x. This is correct. Let's take a look at an example. So if you have the square root of a negative number, let's say negative 3 in here, and we square this number. So exactly this structure here, we have a number in here that is squared, we had a number in here that is squared. Now we cannot just cancel this and this out and say the result is going to be negative 3, because we take a square root here, and the result of a square root is always positive, never negative. So just canceling out is not a thing. We have to take the absolute value of this number here, so of the negative 3. And the absolute value makes everything positive, so even if you have a negative number in here, the absolute value says the result is going to be positive, so positive 3. So be cautious when you just cancel things out. That is only possible if you know what you're doing or if um, the numbers are positive, then everything is good. But with negative numbers, we have to take the absolute value. I'm curious how you solve this problem, so please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of our next videos. Take care!